Well, well, hello, good morning, everybody. And uh, it's been a, about a week or so that I've seen everybody, or that I've come to you um, with our uh, Holy Spirit series that we started. I meant to do another one last week, but I got a little sick. And, um, and then I had graduation this weekend, and there's just so many things going on. But I do want to jump into part three of this, of this series. Um, of the Holy Spirit and so the first day that that I spoke to you I spoke in regards to just to be an introduction to to the Lord and, and, and what it means to be in relationship with the Spirit and and then we talked about um, kind of went into scripture of who is the person of the Holy Spirit what is his function what does he desire what does he do um, yeah, he leads us to Jesus he ministers to us. He reminds us of the things that Jesus has spoken. He is that, as I, I like to use the example, he is the Eleazar, the, the good servant of the good father being uh, Abraham, or in the, in the representing Father God, who sends the servant out, the faithful servant out, to go find a bride that is, that is suiting for his beloved son. And we are that bride. Jesus is the son, Isaac. And, um, and so he gets us ready on the way when he finds us and he leads us back to the sun. He gets us ready. And so the Holy Spirit gets us ready for our encounter, our glorious encounter with Jesus so at one day. And so throughout this life, since when we said yes to the Lord, it was when Rebecca said yes to that servant that she would marry Isaac. And on the journey back, that's our life right now, is that journey back. And we are on our way to encounter our beloved, our beloved bridegroom. And, um, and so that's exactly what, what the Holy Spirit does. He it gets us ready. He gets us ready. He prepares us for our encounter. And so the question is, now how can we fellowship with Him? Paul says in Corinthians, the, the love of the Father, I, and I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's the grace of the Father, the love of, of the, no, the, the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And so what does it mean to fellowship with the Holy Spirit? That literally just means spend time with, commune with, abide in, in the Spirit. And how can we do this? It's very simple. The same exact way, if you're a married person, or even if you're in a, just a regular relationship with anybody, how do you cultivate that relationship? Time. Time is how you cultivate. Quality time is how you cultivate that relationship. Spending time with that person giving that person your attention, giving that person your affection, giving that person the things that are in your heart whenever like you open up your heart to them. And when they open up their heart to you, you be receptive to them. You listen to them and you take care of the words that they, that they spoke to you. That's the exact same thing with the Holy Spirit. We must spend time with Him. There is no way, there is no way to be able to cultivate an adequate and strong relationship with the Spirit of the Lord if we don't give Him time, if we don't actually invest time. Because we invest time, we all have 24 hours in a day. We invest time in what we love. We invest time into what we have an interest in. And so if we want to make money, we invest time into our business. We invest time into our jobs. So if we want the Spirit of the Lord and we want to be in relationship with Him, we will invest time with Him. We will invest time. And, and, and there is no negotiating that. There's People put excuses, but this, but this, but that. It's simple. If we want Him, we will spend time with Him. If we want Him, we will put in effort. We will put in our resources. And most importantly, the adoration and the affection of our heart. That is the most important thing. Because we could be spending time with somebody, but if we are not present in that moment, if we are not actually in that time giving that person all of our affection, then the time is just wasted. It's wasted. So you do need that combination of time and affection. That's what you need, attention. You'd be surprised what the Lord can do when you give Him a portion of your time portion of your time and that portion of your time becomes a greater portion as time goes on I heard somebody say one time talking about the first fruits because the first fruits is, is very important the first fruits if in, in terms of agriculture is the first 
um, harvest, the first part of the harvest. And in, in biblical times, and even today, what we are commanded to do is to give the Lord our first fruits. And that's why we, when we give our tithing, our 10% of our income to the Lord, it's the first 10%. It's not just a 10%. It's not valid when we give it to Him at the end, or, or we gather up money to be able to give Him um, our tithing. It's as soon as we get paid, we... I, you know, I, I personally, I send through PayPal that morning out when I see that I got my direct deposit, I send my PayPal um, tithe to the church. Maybe you don't do that, but what you could do is set the money apart when you get paid, set the money apart. That's exactly what you need to do. And it's the first 10%. So what if we give the Lord our first part of our day? What if we give the Lord our first part of our week, the first part of our year? That first part ends up being, if, let me say it this way. If our finances are made holy, when we give the Lord what is His, and keep in mind, when we tithe, we are not giving to the Lord. We're actually just giving Him what belongs to Him already. That's why when we withhold our tithe, we're actually stealing from Him because it belongs to Him. Everything beyond the 10% is an additional gift. But the 10% is what belongs to him. It's non-negotiable. So if our finances are sanctified through this, how much more our day if we give to the Lord the first part of our day? How much more if we give him the first part of our year? How much more if we give him if we give him that? How, how bad would a relationship be? A husband and wife relationship be if they wake up in the morning and they don't speak they live in the same house and they don't speak until about 1 or 2 p.m. that would be a very malfunctioned relationship if they wake up they go about their day they ignore each other the whole time and about 1 or 2 p.m. they finally start interacting that's not normal that's not normal what do you do as soon as you wake up and you see each other you interact but how come with the Lord we don't do that. It's because, man, I feel the presence of the Lord right now. He just wants to commune with us so badly. I can just sense him. We, we. He wants to commune with us and fellowship with us. But are we aware that we actually live with him? If we were to be aware, oh, I can just, I'm sorry, I sense the presence of the Lord so strongly right now. I just think he's talking to me right now. <laughs> if, if we were aware, if we truly were aware, and I think I just, I think the Lord is telling me right now, you need to become more aware. If we were aware that we actually lived with him, we would not ignore him. Not just in the first part of our day, but as we go throughout our day, we would never ignore him. How could we? How could we? How could you ignore a king? And so, when we give the Lord our time, it's very simple. First of all, you must go and be alone with him. You must go and be alone with him. There is no negotiation. You have to you have to go be alone. It's all over the word. He would go to a solitary place to pray. He would take his disciples away to a solitary place so that they may rest. So you've got to be alone with the Lord, away from the crowds. That's why he says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. That gives a context, an idea of being alone, being away from the noise being away from the things of life that are distracting us and second of all once we're there go in be alone with the lord if you hear music sorry i'm in the streets right now and people play music on their cars be with the lord open up your bible and just start reading what to read who cares just read it's all bread it's all heavenly bread. It's all manna from heaven. Just start reading. Just start reading. And when you sense the presence of the Lord coming on you, just stop. Just stop. Play some worship.
whatever moves your soul. Some music moves people's souls more than others, other kind of music. Okay, if you know me personally, you know what kind of music moves my soul in worship. It's just instrumental worship. You know, but sometimes the Lord says, no, I want you to play this. So you just let the Spirit guide you. And when you sense Him coming, just stop it all. Just stop. Just stop singing. When you feel Him come on you, stop reading. The Word, the music, it's, it's fulfilled its purpose. Its purpose was to lead you to the King. And now you're encountering Him. Why get distracted still with those things that led you? To, why Don't get distracted with the road when you reach the destination. Come on. Don't get distracted with the road. The road has now led you to the destination. Now focus on the destination. Focus on where you are. You are now with the king and just let him guide you. After that, after you're there, I, I have no further instructions for you. Just the only thing I would say is eliminate distractions and give him all your attention. Because now you're on a date with him. Uh, now you're on a date with him. Now you're on a, you're in a place where he's going to speak to you you're in a place where he is going to minister unto you he is going to love you you're on a date with him and he's got it all set up for you you just have to sit back and relax and let him love you guys oh, oh i can just jesus is here right now on this on this video right now i can sense him so badly thank you lord I kind of want to leave you and just go be with him, but um, <laughs> let me just say this. He wants to fellowship with us so badly. How could it be that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords would want to fellowship with you and me? Who are we? David says, who am I and what is my house? David said, I look up at the stars and when I contemplate the work of your hand, what is man that you would be mindful of him? What is man that you would be mindful of him? Who are we that Jesus would just think about us? Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. So, Father, I just pray that you would come upon my brothers and my sisters and that they would know you and that they would experience you and that they would love you from the bottom of their hearts father bless them and fill them with the power of the holy spirit fill them with your power lord fill them with your heavy anointing god and to feel the call to be with you and let the holy spirit guide us into the person of jesus we love you lord we love you, Lord. I bless you, and I declare that today and this week is going to be a wonderful week. Share this with your friends. If this is a blessing to you, let them be a blessing to them. I'm not seeking you know me. I'm not seeking likes. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not seeking attention. I just want to bless you. And so if this is a blessing, share it. That means somebody else may be blessed too. The more people get blessed, I'm blessed, and... And yeah, if you have any needs, please email me and that email that you see in the description below. If you want to contact, you can do the same thing. Um, I'll be out of the country in the next few days, so hopefully I can go live, or not live, but I can make a video from, from where I'm at. So I love you, take care, and uh, God bless you. Bye.